Now the topic is ecology and habitat. The word ecology was coined by the German zoologist Ernest Haeckel in 1886. Ecology is the study of the interaction animal with the, its immediate surroundings or immediate environment. It's a relation of animal both to its organic as well as its inorganic environment. Thus, ecology deals with the organism and its environment. Here, the environment is segmented into the two part, biotic part and abiotic part. The study of ecology is ancient one. It started during the ancient Greek and Roman era. And uh, during the ancient journey of ecology, the Aristotle and Theophrastus were the pioneer during those era. Uh, Theophrastus was the friend of Aristotle and they believed in the, in the theology of Plato. Theophrastus was the first person who described the interrelationship between the organism and the uh, and and the organism and its functional relations to the environment. Rather, Theophrastus was the first person who described the interaction of biotic world and abiotic world to a group of organism. Habitat. Habitat means the place or the geographical place or the type of site where an organism or a group of organism or a group of population usually or naturally occurs. Habitat is the natural environment where a particular organism lives and utilizes the resource of that place for its survival, food, shelter, protection and mating. Therefore, habitat is a particular geographical space or the particular area where the organism lives. Basically, it's an address for the particular group of organism of a particular organism. It can be studied in different way, in different spatial scale. It ranging from the micro scale to macro scale. Micro scale habitat study is called niche. And macro scale, rather large scale habitat study, is known as biodiversity zone. Nisse is a small and teeny ecological area. Biodiversity is a comparatively large area. Biodiversity is the geographical area. That area holds the totality, holds the holistic approach. It holds the totality of genus, species, and ecosystem diversity of a particular region. Biodiversity includes three things, genetical diversity, species diversity, and ecological diversity. Genetical diversity is the variation of a particular genus within a particular community. Suppose there are various kinds of fish, the all are in fish community or are, are fish species. Within the same fish species, there is lot of genetical diversity. Within the snake or reptiles community, there is lots of genetical diversity. Now come to the point of species diversity. Species mean the lots of diversities of different species. Okay. And now third is ecological diversity. Shundurban is ecological diversity. It is a combination of plant community, various animal community and their interaction zone and their functional relation. Ecological niche, rather niche, describe how a particular species interact within the ecosystem. Niche is the, funda niche is the fundamental role and the position of a particular species in the environment. That describes how a particular species interact to the nature. Okay, rather uh, habitat is the address and niche is the is the is the job is the performance is the functional relationship with the environment Nisse defines the but it defines a particular role played by the particular organism to an ecosystem it's a profession rather habit is an address ha the habitat of the organism is the place where the uh, where the particular organism or particular community lives 
ecological niches termed coined from the El Elton in 1927. The position or status of an organism within the particular community or the ecosystem resulting from the organism structure and functional adaptation. Rather, niche is uh, used in narrow sense how the organism react with the environment, react with the biotic and abiotic world. A habitat is the in totality is the living place of particular organism. Habitat concept several niche. Uh, in, uh, in fact, a connotation is a uh, connotation of habitat is quite broad. Niche is the is the specific to a particular species. The ecological niche is defined as a sum total of the adaptation of by the particular organism or a group of organism. Now come to the ecotone. Ecotone word is solely, solely applicable for the plant community or the vegetation community. It's a transitional area of vegetation zone. It's a transitional area of vegetation zone between the two different plant community. Rather, it's a zone of junction. Rather, it's a zone of transaction between the two biomes. Biomes is the diverse biological ecosystem that is called biomes. Uh, that uh, we can take an example of ecotone. Suppose mangrove forest of Shundurbun is example of ecotone because of the mangrove forest is lies in the transitional phase. It lies in between the marine ecosystem and terrestrial ecosystem. That is the reason mangrove forest is called the transitional ecosystem. It's known as a ecotone. Now come to the point of habit destruction. What is habit destruction? Habit destruction is the habit destruction occurs when the natural habit of a particular organism are no longer able to support the particular process and and resulting form is the displacement destruction and decay of biodiversity basically habit destruction is the decay of biodiversity that is called the habit destruction a uh, primary effect of habit destruction uh, we are all familiar with the result of habit destruction it will reduce it will reduce the uh, biodiversity it will destruct uh, it will destroy the species diversity and genetical diversity it will destroy the environmental quality and ecosystem balance it will disrupt the food web and food chain system all these things rather it will it will ultimately uh, adversely affect the human community human resource availability and the quality of ecosystem quality of and it will degrade degrade the quality of environment causes of habit lot basically it's divided into the two segment natural causes of habit lot and anthropogenic causes of habit lot uh, natural causes of habit loss habitat loss basically natural causes segmented into the two parts climate change and hazard we are all familiar with the adverse effect of climate change and and its related consequence to the ecology and environmental impact in arctic region uh, we are all familiar that ice are melting due to climate change and global warming and it will not only not only responsible for the ice melting it's it's straight to the polar bear polar bear are vanishing due to uh, loss of uh, ice cap due to changes in the um, in the glaciation pattern uh, ice are melting it will ultimately leads adverse effect on the coastal region ultimately it will affect on the cyclone and super cyclone type of hazard another thing is that in, in last year or in this year 2021 in last february in uttarakhand uh, region in, in garwal himalayan it is believed to have been caused a landslide and avalanches through the melting of or the to the melting of glaciation it ultimately causes loss of life destruction and it will advert it it adversely affect the Nanda Devi National Park in 
Uttarakhand area. And last May, in 2020 May, a cyclone Ampani Shundurbon uh, adversely destroyed the mangrove forest. Those are the hazards, those are the climatic hazards, and ultimately oh, those are responsible for the destruction of mangrove forest and biodiversity of Nanda Devi region and the also the reduction of uh, polar ice and ultimately it's a threat to the polar bear in Arctic region. Those are the example of a few example of climate change. Now come to the hazard. In 1997, the Indonesian forest fire that was an, an that was an natural hazard, and uh, 1997 forest fire not only destroyed the forest cover, it uh, it 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 was adversely hit the um, animal community too. And super cyclone 2020 in Sundarban also destroyed the aquatic animal. It was a pressure and threat to the aquatic animal and marine ecosystem and uh, a, a devastating volcanoes uh, in 2020 is october in java that lahore related after volcanic eruption and lahore destroyed a lot of plant animal and plant species in uh, java and last 2018 the in flood devastating flood in kerala kerala perial lake zone and one report of Kerala government uh, described the uh, loss of biodiversity in Kerala region. And they, that, that report described that 1053 flora and 695 fauna uh, are already, already destroyed by that kind of flood. So hazard adversely hit the biodiversity and habitat loss. Now come to the point of anthropogenic causes. Population is a pressure to the human human civilization, extension of human civilization and population creates pressure on the natural resource, on the environment and consequent result is changes in land use pattern, interference in hydrology and hydrosphere, extension of agricultural land, grazing land, industrialization, pollution, all these things adversely affect not only the ecosystem, it will, uh, it will uh, hit the uh, hydrology, hydrological condition, atmospheric condition and surface runoff and as well as the soil type, all these things and also responsible for the atmospheric pollution and ultimately all these things simultaneously and steadily steadily uh, decay it's steadily responsible for the for the environmental degradation and environmental loss and ultimately loss goes to the uh, zone of biodiversity agriculture industrialization all are the pressure to the ecology and ecological resource extra land is needed to grow the more edible foods more for more shelter more land use changes in land use pattern and and the forest land has to be cleared to meet those demand of human being and ultimately pressure ultimate adverse effect goes to the biodiversity zone and civilization and concretization in urban areas also destroy the uh, urban atmosphere, urban ecosystem, urban air quality and also prevent the surface runoff also a barrier to form to recharge the groundwater table. Ultimately all these things responsible for the loss of biodiversity and habitat loss. Major kind of habitat loss. Uh, habitat loss uh, is uh, categorized into the three segments, habit destruction, habit fragmentation, and habit degradation. Habit destruction means the uh, people directly destroy that kind of habit, like, uh, uh, like clearance of forest, uh, um, filling of wetlands, that kind of things are the example of habit destruction. Which, which are people directly destroy the habit. Second one is the habit fragmentation. Habit fragmentation is the uh, um, occurred through the uh, construction of human civilization, extension of human civilization. Suppose terrestrial wildlife habitation zone 
has been cut up by the extension of roadway, railway and river bridge, all these things. Those are the example of habit fragmentation. Uh, in, in free habit fragmentation, the ecological area is not totally removed. Ecological attributes are not totally removed but uh, hampered by the human interference. Third one is the habit degradation. Habit degradation is the decaying the quality of the environment by the human interference such as pollution, uh, sound pollution, noise pollution, air pollution. And it, it's not directly, human beings are not directly destroying the ecological system by ecological diversity. But the consequence of human activities ultimately hits the ecosystem like air pollution, sound pollution, all these things ultimately hits the ecological system and degrades or decay the environmental quality. And the federal, in, uh, federal system in United States of America divided the species into the two categories according to the Federal Endangered Species Act in 1978. But government of India categorized the plant and animal species on the basis of ecological pressure into the three categories, extinct species, endangered species, and threatened species. Extinct means which are are not now we are not seeing all these species they are vanished uh, vanished by the human activities of course just like the shivali elephant africa lion ones who are in west Bengal. now they are in nowhere those are the example of extinct uh, pink headed duck uh, before 50 years back in gangetic plan even in bangladesh and myanmar this pink headed duck was very famous and uh, they are they are observed in riverine areas of West Bengal, but they are in nowhere. They are the extinct species. Now endangered, who are in in the way of extinction, who are in the way of extinction, known as endangered. That is fishing cat, known as Kabuli beetle, Indian bulger, outlet red panda, rhino. Those are in endangered situation in West Bengal perspective. Now your fishing cat that is Kabuli Beral is already in the list of red list of endangered red list of IUCN of endangered species. Here I would like to mention one thing you know uh, in uh, you know uh, we are all talking about and government policies all, all are always saying about the savings of marine ecosystem, saving of wet, uh, savings of water bodies and continent. But in between continent and ocean, in between the water and land, there is this transitional zone that is the wetland, marshland. But government, uh, government of India uh, never says uh, clear cut ideas clear cut policies never provides uh, clear cut policies regarding the wetland management uh, last time in 2020 2017 government of india announced policies for the first time for the wetland management and wetland conservation now come to the point of threatened species. Threat, threat means who are in pressure who are in pressure tigers elephant cheetahs crocodile hardy threatened the list of West Bengal. Now come to the point of habitat in West Bengal. The state, the state West Bengal entered 4046 square kilometers of forest is a protected forest. Okay, uh, in West Bengal has uh, almost um, almost 22 national parks and tiger um, and um, wildlife sanctuary. In West Bengal has a broad list of uh, sanctuaries and tiger uh, West, um, sanctuaries and national park. Through this web page, you can get the complete list of sanctuaries and national park of the West Bengal. Here, I would like to mention one thing: national park and wildlife sanctuaries in West Bengal are not the synonymous. National park is the natural ecological area, natural habitat or natural niche of the particular species. But wildlife sanctuary is artificially created by the government support 
to provide a support to provide the survival benefits or survival strategies to fit a survival strategies for particular community it's it's a wildlife sanctuary is a is a identified area by the government of west bengal to protect few species but national park is the natural habitat natural uh, biodiversity zone of the particular species suppose sundarbon is a national park for the tiger reserve boksha national park for the north bengal is a as a national park it's the natural ecosystem for the tiger tiger species okay now list of the wildlife sanctuaries and national park of west bengal first one is the ballopur wildlife sanctuary in uh, established in 1977 shantiniketan and birbhum here the kalam for the address here the kalam for the animal species you, you, you all have to go uh, all have to go through this uh, animal species and the uh, uh, address of the sanctuary but uh, now the second one is the bethwadwari wild sanctuary established in 1988 this is the species diversity this column is the address then uh, bibhuti vishan wildlife sanctuary 1964 established in 1964 then boksha tiger reserve is a tiger reserve it 1983 then chapramara wild forest 1998 then chintamani cord bird sanctuary 1982 they are here the species and these are the address column Guru Mana National Park, nineteen forty nine. Then, uh, Holiday uh, Island uh, Wildlife Sanctuary, nineteen eighty nine, established in Jalalpur National Park, established in nineteen forty one. Then, Jorpoki Wildlife Sanctuary near the Darjeeling, established in nineteen sixty four. Then, Luthian uh, Island Wildlife Sanctuary, established in nineteen eighty nineteen seventy six. Then, Mohananda. A wildlife sanctuary in Darjeeling, nineteen seventy six. Then it, this uh, this elephant reserve in just just two thousand two thousand ten. Uh, this elephant reserve are in Medhnapur district, rather East Medhnapur district, Moyurjhar Moyurjhar na elephant reserve, Medhnapur district. Then Narendrapur wildlife sanctuary, nineteen eighty two. Then Nirola ne, ne, Valley National Park in near the Darjeeling. Then Raigonj Wildlife Sanctuary, then Ramona Bagan at Bardhaman, then uh, Roshikville in Koch Bihar, Roshikville Sanctuary, then Shushne Khali, and then Shanchel Wildlife Sanctuary in Darjeeling, then Singarelle National Park, then ultimately Sundarbans National Park, and uh, established in 1984. Those are twenty-two national park. There are five. There are fifteen national park or seven sanctuaries in West Bengal. These are the list, and you have to prepare a list with the with the with list of sanctuaries and national park of West Bengal. Okay, then come to the point of biodiversity conservation. Uh, initially man and biosphere program was the first program related to the biosphere conservation or ecological conservation it's known as a man and biosphere program this program is initiated by the unesco not the government of india uh, 120 countries accepted this proposal of unesco and india was the one of them then then uh, in regarding the biodiversity preservation Food stuff are very important protection of wildlife and habitat area by the law. Here, law, law is related to the government of Indian law. Second is the habitat improvement program by the government of law. Third is reduction of animal man conflict zone. Ah, uh, suppose ah, uh, most of the time in newspaper headings, ah, uh, we saw that um. The elephant came in a railway track in North Bengal. A cheetah came in a railway track in North Bengal. Rather, a group of uh, elephant came to the village near the Biryatur Bakura and destroy the paddy field. All these things. Those are the conflict zone. The so government is trying to reduce reduce the man animal conflict zone. Our ultimate objective is more research and more monitoring to improve the ecology and biodiversity. Minister of Environment and Forest established in 
but Ministry of Environment and Forest was renamed into the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change in 2014. Now Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate since 2014 are taking initiative is taking initiative to pursue to protect the environment to to ensure the quality of environment to to reduce the loss of biodiversity this organization is trying to improve our environmental and ecological quality now green uh, national green tribunal has established in 2010 uh, this is an autonomous body green tribunal try to mitigate and try to uh, try to establish a bridge or try to maintain the peace related related to the environmental disputes it involves in the multidisciplinary issue now come to the indian forest policy indian forest service uh, was established by the aims of scientific management and protection of forest area all india forest service act has been implemented in 1951 and environmental protection act enacted in 1986 and this act uh, has been changed or rather amended in 1991 and government of india enacted wildlife protection act for the first time in 1972 to control to control to manage uh, to loss uh, to protect the loss of biodiversity illegal trade related to wet, wild li wildlife all these things to protect the wildlife basic objective was to protect uh, to work wildlife and uh, 2017 government of india um, implementing or trying to manage the wetland by the rules of 2017 okay now come to the another segment I'll come to the another segment this is this segment is the main principle or rules related to the forest conservation related to the forest conservation which is our government of india enacted for the forest conservation first time 1972 wildlife protection act this that act was amended by the government of india in 1991 second one is 1980 Forest Conservation Act in 1981, third one is 1981, Forest Survey of India. In 1985, it's a milestone, Ministry of Forest and Environment come in reality. In 1988, this, this was the first elaborate forest policy for the government of India that is known as uh, National Forest Policy. Then 1990, Joint Forest Management Concept and the participatory forest management uh, concept uh, implemented by the government of India in 1991. My student is familiar with the CRZ coastal regulatory zone uh, notification used under the government of India. Then 1992, the national for afforestation program and the eco development board has been formed. In 1994, environmental impact assessment notification and 1996, uh, conservation and to combat the desertification a policy and 1999, the uh, National Forest Action Program and 2000 National Forestry and Research Plan. Those are the basic forest related law of the government of India. And through this law, government of India as well as West Bengal provides supports of the forest area to preserve the forest area. And in 2018, National Draft Forest Policy, this is the latest law, but this draft law related to the forest. Uh, and uh, last time, National Forest Policy enacted in 1988, after 30 years. 19, uh, 2018 the national draft forest policy came and published and uh, lots of criticism and lots of uh, uh, dichotomies arised regarding that policy government is trying to formulate and to modify this policies draft national forest policy uh, is trying and it is already it is it is in the process uh, so government is trying to formulate new policies on the basis of this draft policies and uh, 
this is the uh, this is the wage land conservation management rules of government of india 2017 if you are interested you can go through these details those are the basic things related to the conservation ecological management and ecological resource thank you very much for patience hearing